Yo ho ho and a bottle of rum, or something like that. People have been using boats for everything from fishing to pirating to warfare and more for ages. And today we're going to look at some of the most mean and downright intimidating ships out there on the seas. Prepare to be amazed by all sorts of ships on our world tour of floating fortresses, from aircraft carriers that have all the latest technologies to destroyers from the Cold War and more. We have everything to float your boat and get your ducks in a row. These are the 20 largest military ships on the planet. Number 20. The Ford Class Aircraft Carrier When it comes to America, it's all about going big or going home, and that's doubly true when we have a look at their military arsenal. This is the current class of nuclear-powered aircraft carrier that's produced for, and used by, the United States Navy. There are a total of 10 of these massive floating structures planned for the future, as the existing aircraft carriers gradually go out of service. The plan is to replace them with these Gerald R. Ford carriers, We've already had a look at the Enterprise, which has been outclassed by this newer model, and there are plans to eventually replace all of the Nimitz-class carriers as well. These gigantic ships do have some things in common with the Nimitz-class, but with a bunch of upgrades like the electromagnetic aircraft launch system and a whole selection of other efficiency-improving upgrades and the all-important operating cost reduction design features. These aircraft carriers are as large as previous classes, but they've also been redesigned to operate with a smaller crew. So the Navy, like everywhere else, is replacing people with technology in the name of efficiency savings. Now it's time for the fancy topic. What we have here is what I imagine to be Darth Vader's naval-based wet dream, when in reality, what we're told is that this monstrosity is a product of China's new naval warfare program. But I don't know, it seems kind of suspect to me that a big old boat like this one hasn't made the nightly news or been on the cover of Boats and Bovines magazine. I mean, really, it's more of a mixture of a traditional aircraft carrier with distinctly attractive pirate flair that has gone to the dark side. And really, probably just a whole lot of bullshit if I'm being honest. But what are your thoughts? Is this the next great menace coming out of China, or more like something imagined by HP Lovecraft? As always, you can comment down below using the hashtag fancy topic and let me know your opinion in relation to what I just showed you on the screen. Number 19. Kuznetsov Class Aircraft Carrier the Kuznetsov-class aircraft carrier is a massive Russian ship that is used for transporting all manner of Russian war gear, and in particular, its fighter jets and other aircraft. Such a fun one! These carriers are pretty big, and they apparently measure around 1,000 feet long, which for reference is like three football fields. They can carry about 40 fighter jets and helicopters, which may seem like plenty if you ask me. This carrier has a unique sort of feature, where they use a ski jump style ramp to help the planes take off. It's like a big slope at the front of the ship that gives the planes a boost into the air. These carriers are powered by regular fuel, like most ships, but they also have some problems with reliability. It basically means that it's a tricky business to keep them running, and they're a bit of a maintenance black hole. But then again, keeping anything that is essentially a massive floating city with a built-in military airport on board in tip-top shape must be fairly difficult, and no doubt comes with a substantial price tag as well. But if you do insist on doing all of the warring, well, then this is going to be the stuff that gets expensive. Number 18. Nimitz-class aircraft carrier. The Nimitz-class aircraft carriers are massive, like floating cities. They're over a thousand feet long and can carry up to 70 aircraft, which includes fighter jets, recon planes, and many, many helicopters. Instead of using regular fuel, these massive ships use nuclear reactors to generate electricity, which means that they can go a really long time without having to refuel. This is probably a rather convenient feature when you're out at sea for months on end. The flight deck on top of the carrier is like a kind of weird military airport. There are different sections for taking off, landing, and parking all of the planes, and in addition to all that, there are massive catapults that help launch the planes off the deck. 
Yes, just like in Top Gun. These carriers have a crew of about 3,000 sailors who have everything on board that sailors need, such as living quarters, kitchens, and even a hospital. It's all pretty useful for the massive job of running the United States military machine. Number 17. The Kirov Class Battle Cruiser. Back in December of 1977, the Soviet Union launched the biggest warship, excluding aircraft carriers, that had been constructed since the Second World War. This was the Kirov class battle cruiser, and it was a big one indeed. Five of these battle cruisers were planned, although in the end only four were completed. They were named for heroes of the Bolshevik Revolution, but after the collapse of the USSR, they had a quick name change. The nuclear-powered Kirov class warship was almost as big as the United States Iowa class, but these were much more modern and had better armaments and sensors than their American counterparts. They could be equipped with a huge amount of weaponry, as well as up to five helicopters equipped with anti-submarine equipment and missile guidance technology. The other sorts of weapons would vary from ship to ship, but could include vertical launch-range surface-to-air missiles, close-in-air defense in the form of missiles, and dual-purpose guns as well as a whole lot of anti-submarine technology and torpedoes. These vessels were powered by a combination of nuclear energy and steam systems, and the massive size of the ships gives them plenty of space on board for a full command, control and communications outfit, and the size also made costs of the building the ships somewhat prohibitive, let alone the crazy expense in maintaining them as well. Number 16. The Mistral Class Amphibious Assault Ship Next up, we have another big old pile of ship that's been built by France. The Mistral class is an amphibious assault vessel, which is also sometimes known as a helicopter carrier or projection and command ship. These big boats are designed to carry as many as 16 Tiger helicopters, as well as four landing craft and as many as 70 vehicles. That also includes some sizable stuff like tanks in fact, it can actually transport a full tank battalion if it's required to do so. The vessel is equipped to carry 450 troops and also contains a fully functional hospital with 69 beds. These ships are used as part of the NATO Response Force and also for UN peacekeeping activities. The ship has been at the center of a bit of international controversy in recent years. Two of these warships were on order to the Russian Navy since 2010, but after the aggressive moves by that nation in Ukraine, the order has been canceled and refunded by the French government. The ships have since been sold to Egypt instead. Number 15. The Type 055 Destroyer these next ships are actually China's most formidable warships and amongst the most dangerous of their kind in the world. Belonging to the People's Liberation Army Navy, the Type 055 is a Renai-class guided missile cruiser. They are the Chinese Navy's long-range surface combatants and are designed to provide an escort to the Navy's fleet of aircraft carriers. Mainly, though, it appears that the goal of these ships is to show the rest of the world that China has everything that everyone else has, and more, and you should not mess with them or their navy. So, the ship has a vertical launch system with 64 launchers of an 8x8 configuration and 48 more launchers in a 6x8 configuration. That's a whole lot of missile launching capability. They also have a whole bunch of different surface-to-air missiles available and have a range between 100 nautical miles and 290 nautical miles between them. These tubes are also alleged to be able to launch anti-submarine missiles as well as land attack cruise missiles, so that's all very unreassuring then. Number 14. The USS Zumwalt DDG-1000 The USS Zumwalt is a United States Navy guided missile destroyer, meaning that it's a ship which is equipped with loads of guided missiles that are employed during battle to provide anti-aircraft warfare for the naval fleet. What a fun one! The USS Zumwalt is a relatively new addition to the United States Navy. It was first commissioned in Baltimore in October of 2016 and was designed to have a multi-million dollar capability. This particular destroyer class is specially created for combat in deep water 
and is designed to support ground troops in attacks on land, as well as the usual naval destroyer jobs of anti-air cover and anti-submarine warfare. So she's an all-arounder, and she's also got an appearance that's rather unlike any other naval destroyer that's come before. This angular, boxy shape is more like a spaceship than a seafaring one, and it's been tested for the ultimate poor conditions at sea. The vessel's wave-piercing bow is inverted, and the shape of the ship has been sculpted to reduce the radar cross-section. All in all, the USS Zumwalt is a modern warship that's been designed and tested to withstand contemporary battle conditions and provide backup in every arena of war. Number 13. The HMS Queen Elizabeth the Queen Elizabeth-class aircraft carrier is the fleet flagship of the Royal Navy. It has a capacity for carrying 60 aircraft, whether they happen to be autonomous vehicles, rotary wing, or fixed wing. Commissioned back in 2017, the HMS Queen Elizabeth entered service with the Royal Navy in 2020. The ship was designed with flexibility in mind. It can carry a multitude of combinations of aircraft and has space to accommodate 250 Royal Marines. It can also support attack helicopters and troop transport copters like Chinooks. The ship also includes defensive weapons, having anti-aircraft and anti-missile defense systems, as well as the potential to carry various guns, although it is not always fitted with them. Number 12. The Ticonderoga Class these ships are also known as the Aegis Cruiser on the account of their being equipped with the Aegis Combat Management System. These U.S. Navy-guided missile cruisers are mainly employed in a battle force role and have multi-mission capabilities, designed to be able to handle air warfare, undersea warfare, naval service warfare, fire support, and surface warfare situations. As well as all the usual gear, these cruisers are equipped with Tomahawk cruise missiles. This means that they have long strike warfare capability, and some even have been equipped with ballistic missile defense capabilities. These ships are in the program for cruiser modernization that is presently being implemented all across the United States Navy, meaning that for the next decade or so, they will undergo updating and upgrading in order to improve their anti-submarine capabilities, as well as adding fancier weapons and sensor systems. The plan is to make the fleet more cost-effective while being more competitive for longer. Fingers crossed for all of that then. Number 11. Sejong the Great Class Destroyer This is the Sejong the Great Class Destroyer, which also goes by the slightly less grand-sounding KDX-3. These are the guided missile destroyers that make up part of the Republic of Korea Navy. These warships are fitted with the Aegis Combat System as well as multi-function radar antenna. These ships are 8,500 tons, having a maximum capacity of 11,000 tons at full load. This makes them the biggest destroyers in the South Korean Navy. They're part of a concerted effort to raise the level and profile of the Navy in maritime regions of South Korea. In fact, that's probably their primary purpose. As they live in the shadow of a permanent threat from the hostile nation of North Korea. These ships are equipped with the capability to track and monitor any missile that may be launched from literally anywhere within North Korea. And they're also pretty heavily armed themselves. These destroyers come equipped with main level naval gun, missile launchers, anti-aircraft weapons, rolling airframe missile block, and all-round impressive cruise missile interception capability. Number 10. The Arley Burke Class Flight IIA Destroyer Next up, we have a destroyer from the United States Navy. This ship is the Arley Burke Class of Guided Missile Destroyer, and as you may expect, its primary purpose is to use the Aegis combat system and provide interception capabilities with advanced radar systems. First commissioned in 1991, these destroyers have multi-mission capability, both offensively and defensively, and there are currently what's called three flights of categories. Flight 1 includes the first 21 of these ships, 
Flight 2 is the next seven, and then Flight 3 thereafter. In 2018, the United States Navy also released plans to upgrade their existing destroyers to keep them in service for longer. These improvements included hangars for helicopters, as well as new software systems, and a bunch of sonar junk with extra missiles and an upgraded Aegis radar. So, everything is extra shiny and new, and even better at destroying things. Huzzah! That is all these ships are meant to be about, after all. Number 9. The Type 45 Destroyer This is the Daring Class, or Type 45 Class Destroyer, that was built for the Royal Navy to replace the Type 42, or Sheffield Class. These Type 45 Class Destroyers are the most advanced warships in service in today's Royal Navy, and initially they were due to be Horizon Class ships, like those that are operated by the French and Italians. The joint project fell through for the UK, when it was beset by delays and disagreements. And so, they went ahead and created their own destroyer, the result of which is this, the Daring Class. There were six of these Type 45 anti-air warfare destroyers that were completed. They're mostly designed to perform in anti-aircraft and anti-missile warfare situations. These are the first Royal Navy vessels that have gender-neutral accommodations to house male and female crew members, and they have individual cubicles instead of the old-style communal showers and toilets. The main purpose of these ships is to provide advanced air defense. They're equipped with Sea Viper air defense systems that use Samson Active Electronically Scanned Array Multifunction Radar. It can track over 2,000 targets while simultaneously controlling and coordinating multiple missiles. As well as the high-end anti-air stuff, these ships are also extremely well-equipped for anti-ballistic missile capabilities. They're frequently called the most advanced anti-air warfare vessels in the whole world. And given their hefty price tag, they really should be. Number 8. The Dokdu Class Amphibious Assault Ship Next up, we have the Dokdu Class Amphibious Assault Ship. These are the biggest ships in the Republic of Korea Navy, and they're somewhat cheekily named Dokdu, which is the name of an island that has been at the center of a long-standing ownership dispute between South Korea and Japan. Anyways, antagonism of that sort aside, these ships are a different sort of posturing and another part of the South Korean Navy's efforts to become that elusive thing, the Blue Water Navy. These warships can accommodate a whole battalion of 700 Marines, 10 tanks, and 7 amphibious armored personnel carriers. There are other reports that would suggest that this has the capabilities to carry as many as 200 trucks and other light vehicles as well. The ships have the space for up to 16 helicopters, but they usually carry 10. There's a flight deck, a hangar, and two elevators, and although the warship has been generally equipped for combat types of stuff, it can also be adapted to serve in disaster relief operations, and when it comes to armament, the ship carries 21-cell rolling airframe missile launchers kitted out with short-range dance missiles. It has two close-in weapon systems that are designed to engage any potential incoming anti-ship missiles, and defense is the aim with this ship. The overall use is the transportation of troops and equipment. Number 7. America-class amphibious assault ship The America-class amphibious assault ship is a sizable ship that's used by the United States Navy to carry Marines and their aircraft all over the show during military operations. The America-class ships are named after important places or events in American history. It's essentially a floating base for helicopters, airplanes, and troops. These types of ships are huge, kind of like small aircraft carriers, and they measure around 850 feet long. They can carry over 1,600 Marines and sailors. The America-class ships have a flat deck on top where the helicopters and airplanes take off and land, and they also have a space inside where the Marines can live and work, with rooms for sleeping and eating and planning all of those missions. As well as all the regular stuff, these vessels have a well deck, which is like a big old pool that can be filled with water. It opens up at the back of the ship, allowing for smaller boats and vehicles to drive in and out, which is useful for amphibious operations, and as a plunge pool when they're having a spa weekend. <laughs> Not really, but that would be pretty fun, wouldn't it? Number 6. The Azumo Class Destroyer This is the Azumo Class Destroyer, which is a helicopter destroyer vessel in service for the JMSDF, that is the Japan Maritime Self-Defense Force. 
It's the biggest of all the warships that Japan has produced since the Second World War, and it's been called an aircraft carrier in disguise. Although it's designed for helicopters, plenty of people have looked at it and figured that there's nothing really stopping it from being used to launch fighter jets in the future if they decide to change its use. These ships are officially classified DDH, which means helicopter carrying destroyers. The main goal of these ships is that of anti-submarine warfare, but they can also be employed in disaster relief and for peacekeeping missions as well. It's possible for these vessels to carry up to 28 aircraft at a time, but they generally only do seven ASW helicopters and a couple of search and rescue ones too. They have the capacity for 400 troops and as many as 50 three and a half ton trucks. There are a total of five helicopter landing pads on the flight deck which can be used for simultaneous takeoffs and landings, and the vessel is also equipped with two Phalanx CIWS and two C-RAM. Number 5. The HMS Vanguard The HMS Vanguard was a large and super powerful battleship that was used by the British Royal Navy. It was commissioned in 1946, just after the Second World War ended, and was huge, with a length of over 800 feet making it one of the largest battleships ever built. It featured a crew of over 2,000 sailors and was armed with massive guns which included 15-inch guns, which were some of the biggest naval guns ever made. They could fire shells over long distances and cause a lot of damage to enemy ships. Back then, war was still in sharp focus, and the Royal Navy had played such an essential role during the Second World War that ships like these just seemed to be essential in the then-modern warfare. Despite its impressive size and firepower, Vanguard did not see a whole lot of action during service. It mainly did training exercises and showed off the power of the British Navy to other countries. In the 1950s, with the rise of aircraft carriers and nuclear submarines, battleships like the Vanguard became a lot less important. The Cold War was being fought in a covert way, which involved a lot of demonstrating potential power and a bit of boasting rather than battleship style. So in 1960, the Vanguard was taken out of service and eventually scrapped. Although it didn't have a long and dramatic career like some other battleships, it was famous for being the last of its kind in the Royal Navy. Number 4. The Iowa Class Now retired, the USS Iowa was once the lead ship of her class and the only one of this class that served in the Atlantic Ocean during the Second World War. In fact, in 1943, she was enlisted to carry President Roosevelt across the Atlantic to a conference with Churchill and Stalin. After this, the Iowa transferred to the Pacific Fleet and would be involved in the Allied operations in the Marshall Islands. She was then the Third Fleet flagship and was there at the Japanese surrender in Tokyo Bay in 1945. During the Korean War, the ship would be involved in battles on the coast of North Korea before being decommissioned and placed into what is affectionately known as the Mothball Fleet, or the United States Navy Reserve. In 1984, the Iowa would then be brought back into service in the Atlantic and Pacific fleets as a reaction to the then-recently expanded Soviet Navy. She finally got put out to pasture in 1990 after an unexplained explosion on one of her gun turrets had killed 47 sailors in the previous year. These days, the ship is a museum, and permanently based in the port of Los Angeles. Number 3. Chinese Aircraft Carrier Shandong The Shandong is a Chinese aircraft carrier and is the country's second. Commissioned in 2019, it's a rather important part of China's naval capabilities. But the Shandong seems to be a budget-conscious choice for the Chinese as well. It was actually built from an incomplete Soviet-era vessel, and it seems as though that is a weird way to go about making a state-of-the-art war machine, since Soviet stuff was not always exactly reliable, and that was also a really long time ago. But anywho, what do I know about China's military strategies? I sit in my underpants in the basement and talk to you all day long. The Shandong, or Soviet donor boat that it was previously known as, underwent extensive modifications to suit new Chinese requirements. It's a pretty large ship that's also equipped with one of those fun-sounding ski jump ramps for launching aircraft. The main use for the Shandong is to carry all the fighter jets and helicopters around in the ocean, and it's also used for training exercises and, of course, to assert China's maritime power in the region. I mean, look at how big their boat is. 
be very afraid. Number 2. The Bismarck Class Two Bismarck class ships were built for Nazi Germany's Kriegsmarine during the Second World War. These big old battleships were named after two prominent figures in German history, Otto von Bismarck and his successor Kaiser Wilhelm II. The two ships were the Bismarck and the Tirpitz. Such fun, those Nazis really just loved to name junk, didn't they? These battleships were some of the most mean warships of the time. With a displacement of about 50,000 to 53,000 tons, it put them amongst the largest of battleships in the world once they were completed. Their main armament consisted of eight 15-inch guns, which were capable of firing shells over long distances with great accuracy, which was less of a popular feature for those on the receiving end than it was for the Germans at the time. But it was also the era of big boats and sea battles and blockades and such, and the war in the sea was the war for supplies. It was fiercely fought with big ships and absolutely no mercy. The Bismarck-class ships were also naturally designed to be symbols of Nazi Germany's naval power and were intended to operate as part of a larger fleet, projecting the image of strength while protecting German interests at sea. The Nazis were all about looking big, bad, and nasty. The Bismarck took its first victims during its maiden voyage in May of 1941, when it engaged the British battleship HMS Hood and the battleship HMS Prince of Wales in the Battle of the Denmark Strait. During that battle, the Bismarck sank the Hood, one of the Royal Navy's most famous ships, with a single devastating blow. However, the Bismarck was later hunted down and then sunk by British naval forces, which seemed to be only fair. The Tirpitz, on the other hand, had a less eventful operational history, spending much of its time in Norwegian waters, lurking about and generally posing a threat to Allied shipping. Despite a whole bunch of attempts by the Allies to sink it, it was only eventually destroyed by British bombers in November of 1944. Number 1. Yamato-class battleship The Yamato-class battleships were a pair of super-heavy battleships built for the Imperial Japanese Navy during the Second World War. They were the biggest and most heavily armed of ships that had been constructed, and this was in response to the naval arms race that went on during the heightened international tensions of the late 1930s. These ships were named Yamato and Musashi and were commissioned in 1941 and 42. They were truly massive vessels with a displacement of over 70,000 tons, significantly larger than any other battleships of the time. The main armament consisted of nine 18.1-inch guns, which were the largest caliber of naval guns ever mounted on a battleship, and they could fire shells over 26 miles, inflicting some rather unpleasant damages on enemy ships. They were intended to be the centerpiece of the Imperial Japanese Navy's fleet. The goal of Japan had been all about projecting power and intimidating potential adversaries. They saw action in several engagements, including the Battle of Late Gulf in 1944, where the Musashi was sunk by American carrier-based aircraft. The Yamato itself met a similar fate in April of 1945 during Operation Tengo, a desperate attempt to attack American forces invading Okinawa. It was sunk by an overwhelming air attack before it could reach its target, and that was the end of these ships for good. That's all for today's trip into the oceans and waterways of the world. Be sure to let me know what you thought in the comments section down below. Check out the other cool things on the screen, and I will see you next time.